Hello, and welcome to this lesson on the rectangular coordinate system. In these lessons, there are three main coordinate systems that we're going to work with. The first is called the rectangular coordinate system. It's also called the Cartesian coordinate system, and it's the one that you're probably most familiar with. Next is the cylindrical coordinate system. And finally, the spherical coordinate system. Now, in this lesson, we are going to focus primarily on the first system, the rectangular or Cartesian coordinate systems. We'll talk about cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates later on in upcoming lessons. So, when we want to build a rectangular coordinate system, we develop the three axes that we're pretty used to. First, we have this horizontal axis, which we'll call the y-axis. Now, this might seem counterintuitive, but we'll talk about why that is in just a second. Next up is the x-axis, down here pointing off to the diagonal. And finally, we have the z-axis, which points straight up. Now, the method of drawing our coordinate system, with x being the diagonal here, z being vertical, and y being horizontal, is called a right-handed coordinate system. And the reason it's called right-handed is that if we draw or imagine that we're turning a screw in the direction that is from x to y, then that screw will progress up the z-axis. And so when it's set up like that, that's why it's called the right-handed coordinate system. Now in this course, primarily we're gonna be concerned with drawing vectors and functions onto this rectangular coordinate system. So the first way to get into that is to talk about a concept called point coordinates, which should seem pretty intuitive. Let's imagine that we have two points. Let's throw the first one, P, and say that P is at x equals one, y equals two, and z equals three. Now, if we put some tick marks on these axes, and let's use pink to represent point P, all that means is that for the x-axis, we come out one. For the y-axis, we come out two. And we're sort of looking for the place where those guys meet. And up on the z-axis, we'll go up three. So that means that this point is sort of hanging out up here in a three-dimensional space. So this just references the point on the individual axes. Oftentimes, it's referred to as sort of the intersection between the planes of x and y and z at those points. Let's look at one more point, just as an example. Let's look at q is equal to 2, negative 2, and 1. Let's go ahead and represent green to do that. But before we can do that, we actually need to add a next, another line, the negative side of our y-axis. Let's call that negative y, and let's put some tick marks on it. And let's use green to represent Q. So Q is 2 down the x-axis, minus 2 down the y-axis, so something like that, and then 1 on the z-axis. So that guy is going to be somewhere up there, and that's our Q, and that's our P. So as you can see, drawing point coordinates is pretty simple. Um, there's nothing here that you haven't been doing since grade school. One last thing we want to talk about is the distance between two points. That's going to come up fairly frequently. The distance between P and Q is given by this expression, and it's just Pythagorean theorem. And all we're saying is the distance is x of P minus x of Q, so the distance or the difference in the x coordinates squared plus the dis difference in the y coordinate squared, yp minus yq squared, plus the difference in the z coordinates, zp minus zq squared. And that whole thing, square root. It's just a three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and calculate this with the numbers that we have. So the distance between P and Q is equal to the square root of 1 minus 2 squared plus, let's see, 2 minus negative 2 squared plus 3 minus 1 squared. All of that is square rooted. Let's start to evaluate that. I think it's still square rooted. And that's going to give us negative 1 squared plus 
4 squared plus 2 squared, which evaluates to 1 plus 16 plus 4, which is going to be equal to the square root of 21, which is approximately equal to 4.5. Point five eight two six. Let's go ahead. If you didn't want to do all this arithmetic, let's go ahead and jump into MATLAB real quick, and we're going to see kind of how that would look in MATLAB. So let's create our two points. Let's say we had p equal to um, one, two, and three, and q equal to two, negative two. Oops. 2, negative 2, and 1. And let's say the distance, the function we can hear it use here is called p dist. And we'll just have p semicolon q. And there we go. There's our answer 4.5826. So here's how we can use MATLAB to calculate the distance between two points in three dimensional space. So that's all there is for this lesson. We looked at the rectangular coordinate system. Specifically, we talked about the fact that it's the right-handed coordinate system. We talked about how to draw points on our three-dimensional rectangular coordinate system. And most importantly, we calculated the distance between these points in three-dimensional space using this implementation of Pythagorean theorem. There we go. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you.